Yesterday, we introduced the, the idea where we have uh, multiple forces acting on a single object. So maybe we got a force of gravity and a normal force acting on an object. Or maybe we have a force of friction and some kind of applied force acting on an object. We learned that whenever we have more than one force acting on an object, the very first step in solving that problem, every single time, will be to do what? We're going to draw a free body diagram. Somebody said it, yeah. We're going to draw a free body diagram. So for instance, if we have a 10 kilogram object right here, there's a force of gravity acting on that 10 kilogram object. It's acting down. There's a normal force acting on that object that will most likely be the same value as the force of gravity. There will be some kind of applied force acting on that object. Maybe it's to the right. We'll call that FA. Maybe we've got another force. Maybe somebody else is pulling it, but pulling it to the left with a bigger force than the first guy is. So we're going to draw that force to the left as a longer vector. Maybe there's a force of friction acting. Hey, if there's friction acting here, which way is friction going to act, left or right? To the right? How do you know? Good. Good. If there is a force of friction here, it's going to be acting to the right. We know that because if it's going to move, it's going to move to the left. And if it moves to the left, friction has to oppose that motion to the right. All right. The next step after we've got our free body diagram drawn, let's cancel out things that, that cancel out. Let's cancel out things that uh, oppose each other or that balance each other. There's two things that balance each other here. What are they? James? Good. The one's going up and down, the force of gravity and the normal force. Now, that's not always going to be the case. It will be probably 85% of the time, and for now, it will be 100% of the time. There will be a time when they don't balance each other. We'll deal with that when the time comes. Okay? The three forces that we have left here, they're the important ones because they're the ones that don't balance each other. So at this point, we would say F net. Net, remember, means the total, the sum. My net pay, okay? yesterday was payday. My net pay yesterday was... Uh, the amount that I got, everything added together. Okay, everything added together. If we add together my gross pay, which is what I start with, plus the negative of Canada pension taken off, plus the negative of employment insurance taken off, plus the negative of income tax taken off, and so on and so on and so on, I get my net salary. My net salary is my total salary. My net force is my total force. FB plus FA plus FF. Doesn't matter what order you put those in, by the way. Now, the next step is usually to replace F net with M times A. The only time I'm not going to replace F net with M times A is if I am looking for the value of F net. If I want to find the acceleration, then I need that in there. If I'm just looking for F net, then I'll just add those forces together and get F net. Now, what do you do with those forces when we plug them in? What do you got to be careful about? What do you got to make sure that you do when we plug in the value of FB, FA, and FF? Yep. Yeah, add negatives to the ones that are going in the opposite direction. Now, usually that means that FA and FF is going to be positive and FB is going to be a negative value. It could be the other way around. It doesn't really matter as long as FB is opposite in sign to FA and FF. Does that make sense? These problems... Okay, start seeing a bunch of these problems in this context and in a lot, of, a lot of other contexts in Physics 20 and in Physics 30, and all of a sudden they start becoming, it's like, oh wait, we've done this a million times before. They all become the same. Okay, they all become the same. Draw the free body diagram. F net is equal to the sum of the forces. Add them up, pay attention to directions, and solve for what you're looking for. All right, we had two questions for homework last night. Questions one and two. Any issues with either of those questions? on 1 and 2. Are they both good? No troubles with either? All right. Excellent, then. Let's take a look at another example, then. This time, we have two athletes on a team. Athletes A and B are their practice to compete in a canoe race. Athlete A has a mass of 70 kilograms. Athlete B is 75 kilograms. And the canoe is 20 kilograms. So the total mass here, I'm just going to draw it as one object. The total mass here is going to be 165 kilograms. I don't care what one guy weighs or what the other guy weighs. I care what the total force is, sorry, what the total mass is of everybody in this canoe and the canoe itself. 
Does that make sense? Athlete A can exert an average force of 400 newtons forward. So if there's a force of 400 newtons forward. We're going to call that FA, 400 newtons forward. Athlete B can exert an average force of 420 newtons forward on the canoe using the paddles. We're going to make that a slightly bigger vector because it's a slightly larger force. Now, uh, I think it was Luis that was asking me about this the other day, about the placement of the forces, yes? Okay. Does it matter that I put FB over here? No, it's, it's, the, it's the second guy that's applying the force, but he's applying it to the same thing. Okay, I can draw it there. I could draw it here. I could draw it here. It doesn't make any difference. It's a little bit neater, I think, a little bit tidier to draw it there. Okay, but it works to draw it anywhere, as long as you draw it in the right direction and roughly the right length. What else we got here? Um, there's water resistance of 380. Which way is water resistance going to act, left or right? It's going to act to the left, right? It's going to oppose the motion. And that water resistance force, we're going to call FW. And it's almost as long as FA, a little bit shorter. We'll make that 380 newtons. Are there any other forces that act on this canoe and the people in the canoe? Any other forces? Gravity, yes. Gravity acts down. And what else acts on the canoe? The normal force. Now, in this case, I don't even know what the force of gravity is. I could figure it out by multiplying m times g. doesn't really matter, though, because we know the normal force and gravity are going to cancel each other out. By the way, what provides the normal force in this case? Usually, it's the ground, we said, right? But it could be something like a roller coaster track. What is it that supplies the normal force here? Yeah, it's the water. It's a buoyant force, right? The buoyant force of the water pushing up really is the normal force there. All right, so we've crossed off Fn and Fg because they, they balance each other, they cancel each other out. That leaves us with all our forces in one dimension. Let's say F net is equal to Fw plus Fa plus Fb. If you name them something different here, that's okay. Hey, call FW FR if you want, the force of resistance. Call them F1, F2, F3 if you want. Okay, it doesn't matter what you call them, as long as you've included all three of them, but not FN and FG. Now, that next step, since we're looking for the acceleration, is to put in M times A. Replace F net with M times A. Now, the mass here is the mass that we're going to the total mass that we're going to use, 165. We're looking for the acceleration. What's FW? 380 newtons. FA is 400 newtons. And FB is 420 newtons, right? Add those up. We're going to get 165 equals 1,200. Happy question? Good. Thank you. I was hoping somebody would find that. 3 is a negative value, Heavy, why is it a negative value? Because it's opposing it, right? Either the 380 has to be negative or the 400 and the 420 have to be negative, one of the two. Um, so 400 plus 420 is 820 minus neg 380 is 440? Is it 440? So we're going to say A is 440 divided by 165. We're going to go 2.3 uh, digits, so it should be 2.67 meters per second squared. Oh, sorry, was there two digits? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. We got two digits here, two digits here, three digits. Three digits, final answer should be how many digits? Final answer should be two, the least precise piece of data. So uh, it shouldn't be 2.67, it should be 2.7. Good. I got a positive acceleration. What does that tell me? It accelerates to the right. No surprise there, right? 
if the bigger force is to the right, then it's going to accelerate to the right. If I had got a negative value for acceleration, clearly I did something wrong, because it can't accelerate to the left when I've got two bigger forces that are acting to the right. Jazzy? The normal force and the force of gravity? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. Um, I probably would mark it wrong if you, if you didn't, because sometimes I, I don't either. Um, but as a matter of good habit, we should. Sometimes we just get a little careless and we just get a little lazy, including myself, and not draw. Uh, I find it hard to mark you wrong when it's sometimes something that I do myself. But you should really put it in, because those forces are there. They just, they just cancel. Okay. So don't panic about it, but try to remember to put it in. Give you a few minutes to see what you can do with these two questions, please, on page 150. Uh, sorry, this one question on 150. Let's draw a picture of this, okay? And we'll give you a chance to keep working on it after we draw a free body diagram here. Uh, we've got the sled. The sled's right there. Uh, it says runners A and B exert average forces of 1220 and, and 1200 newtons forward, respectively. So we're going to say FA. Here is 1,220 newtons, and we're going to say FB is 1,200 newtons. Or you can call them F1 and F2 if you want, it doesn't matter. It says uh, there's a force of friction acting on the bobsled of 430 newtons. It's going to act backwards. We'll call that FF. It's 430 newtons. There is a force of gravity acting down as well, and a normal force acting up. But those two forces are going to cancel each other out. What's the mass of the bobsled and the, and the guys in the bobsled? 630? Who put 630? Who said 630? Okay, that 630 is completely irrelevant to this question. It doesn't make any difference what the maximum mass of the sled and the sliders or in the, uh, the bobsledders are doesn't make any difference. Okay, what matters is the actual mass. The mass of the first guy says, look, we're, we're pushing a pilot, a bobsled, and a brake man. Who cares about the, 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 um, the four-man bobsled with the two riders, the pilot and the brake man? In this case, we have the pilot and a brake man. That's it. The total mass there is 255 plus 98 plus 97 which is going to give me uh, 350, is that right? No, sorry, 450. So there is my free body diagram. Okay, remember, don't count gravity, don't count the normal force. Count these three forces that are left. And then do your thing with the net force thing. Okay, let's see what you can do with that from this point, okay? All right, let's take a look at the rest of it now then. Uh, we know at this point, we know we're going to say F net is equal to the sum of the forces. That's going to be FF plus FA plus FB. And since we're looking for the acceleration here, we're going to say M times A is equal to FF plus FA plus FB. And the mass here, again, is 450, not the 630. That 630 is irrelevant, and sometimes it's a little bit hard for people to understand that we can be given numbers that are irrelevant, that don't matter. Okay, I call that the, the blue car phenomenon. That's my little term for it, the blue car phenomenon. Okay, I give you a question here. A blue car travels down the road at 20 meters per second. How far has it traveled after one minute? Okay, what are we given there? Well, that it was traveling, V is 20 meters per second. Okay, T is one minute. We're looking for the displacement. What else are we given? The car is blue. Clearly, it doesn't matter that the car was blue there, right? So if we can have a question where we have a given, like the blue car doesn't matter, then we can have a question where the mass doesn't matter either, the 630 kilograms. Okay, so just because you see a number doesn't mean you're going to use it. Every time you see something like that, give it some thought. Okay, see if it means something. Okay, determine if it means something. And then either decide to use it or not. Okay, the force of friction here is 430 newtons, FA is 1220, and FB is 1200. Is that right? 
No? I've, I don't know how many people noticed, first of all, that obviously I left it a negative, but second of all, that I actually left space for the negative. Okay? If I leave space in front of a number like that, it probably means that I've left off a negative, so that I've got room to put the negative later on. That's a negative because it's to the left, opposite in direction to the other two. All right, so we add those numbers up on the right-hand side, and then divide 450 by that number, and then we should get 4.4 meters per second squared. It's a positive value, so that means that it goes forward. Make sense? Yeah, this is all still Newton's second law stuff, really, right? We introduced Newton's second law the other day. We said uh, acceleration is directly proportional to the force and in the same direction and inversely proportional to the mass. Okay, bigger force, bigger acceleration, bigger mass, smaller acceleration. We rearrange that to take the form of F is equal to M times A, which is exactly what we see right here. Newton's second law. Today we're going to look at Newton's third law. Does anybody think they know what Newton's third law says? Remember the first law, object at rest stays at rest until acted upon by an unbalanced force. Object in motion stays in motion, straight line constant speed until acted upon by an unbalanced force. The second law, which we just outlined. The third law, you've heard of this before. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Your grade 7 science teacher, your grade 6 science teacher, probably taught you about Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It sounds like the easiest of the three laws, right? <laughs> hey, if I push on you, you push on me. Okay. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Your grade six or seven science teacher probably phrased it exactly the way that Liam just phrased it. Okay, and that's correct. There's nothing wrong with that. But I do think that it leads to misconceptions. I don't think it's a good way to say it, okay, even though it is correct. I don't think it's a good way to say it because I think it can lead you to uh, a couple areas where, uh, where you misunderstand what Newton's third law actually says. Your grade six or seven science teacher may not have even really completely understood Newton's third law. Okay? It is, I think, of the three laws, the hardest one to understand, not the easiest one. Here's two cars. They're going to collide with each other. One's car number five. The other is car number backwards five. Can somebody please... Let's, uh, let's create a new page here. Can somebody please draw a free body diagram of the forces acting on this car? Somebody please come up to the board and draw a free body diagram of all the forces acting on this car. Kevin's going to save our day here. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin's going to draw at least one of these forces acting on this car. He's got one force acting down. We're going to call that the force of gravity. Look at that. Does that work? Sure. There's another force that acts on this car as well that we should be able to get now. I'll draw that one, and then I'll ask somebody else to draw the other ones. Don't you regret not coming up? Now we've taken the easy ones. Gravity and the normal force. Now you're stuck with the hard ones. These two forces, by the way, cancel each other out, right? Okay, so at this point, there's no net force acting on this car. What other forces do we have? Come on up. Dustin's going to save the second part of our day here. I'd say it's moving to the right. Let's draw a little arrow up here saying it's moving to the right. That's not really part of the free body diagram because free body diagrams show forces, not velocities, right? But... Okay, so he's drawing a force that way, and we'll call that F kinetic friction. Let's say there is no friction here, okay? So we're going to take that force away now? I think we can leave that there. Let's call it the force of car two on one, the second car on the first one. Okay, is that okay? And when you hit the second car, it pushes on you, right? You got another one? Or air resistance, we're going to ignore that as well. Air resistance, friction. Just to simplify it here, there is no air resistance, no friction. Let's do this third law again. William told me just a minute ago, for every action, there is an equal and opposite 
reaction. If there's a force 2 to 1 acting to the left, should there not therefore be a force 1 2 equal and opposite acting to the right? Is that right? Whether I draw it there or whether I draw it on the other side doesn't really matter, right? I've got it drawn in the right direction. Does that make sense, guys? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The exact same value of force, opposite direction. There's a problem with this, though. If you take a look at this action, reaction, force, they're the same value. They therefore should, should cancel out. If Newton's third law always holds, then that must mean that there is never a net force acting on an object. And if there's never a net force acting on this car, it isn't going to stop. The car can't stop if there's not a net force acting on it. So how do we explain that? How do we explain that away? Newton's third law always holds, and it does. Then how do we suggest, how do we explain away the fact that this car will stop when it gets hit? if the net force acting on it is zero. That's why I don't like stating it the way that Liam stated it, even though he was just reciting the exact way that his junior high science teacher taught him. Okay, I don't like stating it that way because it leads to the problem that we just had. And that is that no object will have a net force acting on it, and no object will ever, therefore, stop, or even for that matter, start, if it was at rest to begin with. Here's the problem. This F12 isn't there. This F12 doesn't act to the right on this car. But Liam said that every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? Let's go back to our first picture here. Okay, here's the force of gravity acting on this car. Here's the normal force. They cancel. There's a force of car 2 on 1 acting right here. There's gravity acting on this car. There's a normal force acting up on this car. They cancel. There's a force of 1 on 2 acting on this car. Those are equal and opposite forces, but they're acting on different objects. I don't like saying it for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. I like saying it as if object A applies a force on object B, then object B applies an equal and opposite force on object A. Why is that, in my opinion, a better way to say it? Because it reminds us that there's two objects. We don't get confused and do exactly what we did right here and trick ourselves into thinking that there's no net force acting on this object. Okay? This is what almost everybody does when they don't really understand Newton's third law. They draw the diagram the way that we have here. Okay, we understand it now. We get the fact that these two forces are equal and opposite, but that they're not acting on the same object. They're acting on two different objects. So now, this, this car has a net force that's going to cause it to slow down. This car also has a net force that's going to act on it to cause it to slow down. Does that make sense? Newton's third law says if object A applies a force on object B, then object B applies an equal and opposite force on object A. Write that down. Okay? Don't write down what you wrote down in grade 6 or grade 7. It's right. And if you wrote it that way on a test, I'd mark it correct, because it is. But it's not the way to think about it. Because you're going to at some point make a mistake with some question if you think about it that way. It worked for you in grade 6. It's probably not going to work for you in grade 11. Here's another example of Newton's third law beyond the two cars colliding. The one that uh, many of us didn't completely understand because we didn't draw that diagram correctly, but still is a little bit easier to understand than the example that I'm about to give you here, okay? We hit a piece of glass, whether we punch it with our fist or whether we throw a rock at it or whatever. Okay, we say that Newton's third law says object A applies a force on object B, object B applies an equal and opposite force on object A. That all works well and fine, right? Until you break the glass. Okay, here's a piece of glass over here. I throw a rock at it. I break the glass. How can we say that if the rock applies a force on the window, then the window is applying an equal and opposite force on the rock? The window broke. 
is the window applying an equal and opposite force on the rock when it breaks? Yes or no? Who says yes? Who says no? Okay, the no's seem to win here. The no's seem to outvote the, the yeses. Why do you say no? Whoever says that the, uh, the forces are between the rock and the window aren't equal and opposite, why did you say that? The window breaks, right? The window must have had more force acting on it than the rock because the window broke. Does that make sense? Joe, you said that there was the same forces, right? So it was equal and opposite forces that Newton's third law still does hold. Why did you say that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, it's as, it's as simple as that, really, when it comes down to it, right? So the window broke. The rock didn't. What does that say about the forces acting on the rock in the window? Nothing. It says something about the window. The window isn't as strong as the rock. If I, have, if, my, if I apply a force with my fist at 50 newtons on the window, that window might break because it can't hold 50 newtons. What about my hand? Well, there's still 50 newtons pushing back on my hand. My hand just didn't break at 50 newtons. That's all. Okay, if you throw a rock at the window, it's the same thing. The rock applies a certain force on the window. The window applies the same force back on the rock, just that the rock is stronger than the window, right? Does that make sense? If object A applies a force on object B, object B always applies an equal and opposite force on object A. You get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. It happens to everybody sometimes. Hey, you get up. Okay, you stub your toe on the end of the bed. Your toe hurts. Why does your toe hurt? Because you kicked the bed? No, it's not because you kicked the bed. Why does your toe hurt? Because the bed kicked you back. If I apply a force on the bed, then the bed applies a force on me. Listen, don't ever try to use this. If you ever get, don't ever get in a fight, first of all. Okay? But if you ever do get in a fight, don't ever try to use this logic. Okay? But technically, it, it's right, and it works. You go to Mrs. Stafficek's office because you just got in a fight. You started it. You punched somebody in the face. You were mad. Okay, you punched somebody in the face. You go to Mrs. Stafficek's office. She says, why would you punch him in the face? It's like, well, well, like we were both fighting. It's like, Mrs. Stafficek says, no, you punched him in the face. He fell down. Yeah, but when I punched him in the face... His, punch, his face punched me back in the hand with the same force as I punched him with. He should be getting punished just as much as me, right? Is it true? Well, part of it is. Okay. The fact that his face hit you back, sure it is. Sure it is. And should he get punished quite as much? Probably not. Okay. But if object A applies a force on object B, object B always applies an equal and opposite force on object A. Does that make sense, guys? All right, that's Newton's third law. We'll do a little bit more mathematically with it starting tomorrow. Okay, no homework tonight. Good news.